Stevie Fast Jackson, Bahrain One Racing, with episode one of Up in the Air with Stevie Fast. Right turn, Clyde. Look like a heading of 312. Yeah, we're probably going to 15 it. Sorry, Paul's for not getting shot down by F-16. Uh, you guys have seen a couple of the Up in the Air episodes and I've had a tremendous amount of outreach from our YouTube family, wanting to know a little bit more about my aviation um, career, how it started, where my passion for aviation uh, came from, as well as, a lot, as well as a lot about the type of airplanes that I fly, how to get into it. So I figured we would step back to the beginning for this series and kind of give you guys um, a breakdown of, of my path with aviation. A lot of hobbies and passions in life, I believe, choose you. You don't choose it. You don't choose to like to fish or you don't choose to like to hunt. I don't choose to like firearms or fly airplane. It picks you. Most of you guys know from watching our content that pretty much everybody on our team is a weapons enthusiast. We've come up with a new line of promotional products to help you clean and service your firearms. Uh, for you office folks, it also serves as a wonderful desk mat. If you want to put it on your reloading bench, it protects your bench as well as your firearms. 35 inches by 16 inches. It's double stitched around the edge. Very durable. Lasts you a long time. Uh, for all you beverage enthusiasts, we've got new zip-up bottle koozies, thin can uh, seltzer koozies, regular koozies, durable 16-ounce solo cups for you bourbon enthusiasts, as well as a whole line of promotional products on stevefast.com. Uh, aviation definitely picked me. Uh, my father took, uh, there used to be a program here at a local airport called Wings. When I was uh, eight years old in Augusta, Georgia, my father had one of the instructors take me up, fly me around. I'm sure it was a one, Cessna 150 or Cessna 172. Uh, took me flying around our lake and the aviation bug bit me. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Then I see Top Gun. I definitely wanted to be a fighter pilot. Greetings. <laughs> Uh, and life's path takes you a different direction. You don't get to, to pursue the, the fighter pilot role. But my love for aviation never, uh, it never died. And not only that, but it, it grew. As my career in motorsports takes off, uh, I fly a lot. I'm on a lot of commercial airlines all the time. There's been years I've flown on 70, 80, 90 flights a year. Um, so when you fly as much as I do, you kind of like want to know what's going on. So you kind of start studying a little bit of the aviation charts and a little bit of the airport diagrams and how does it work with the tower. Number 8046 Juliet, fly heading 300, vector to final, descent to maintain 2500. 300, 2500, 8046 Juliet. Number 4598, reduce speed to 210, then descend to maintain 5000. Speed 210, then descend to maintain 5000, number 4598. And uh, this kind of grows. Fast forward to COVID, um, I told this story before in an up and air episode. I had a, a right in the, be the beginning of 2020, I was on a flight back from a race and I had a, a flight attendant get really nasty with me because my mask was not over my nose. And uh, to the point where I told her, I was like, I tell you what, I, I, I just will fly myself from here on out. And she laughed at me and I was like, screw this, I can fly myself. Left the airport, drove straight to our local flight school here in, uh, in Augusta, Georgia, and uh, walked in the front door. Uh, Miss Sonia sitting behind the desk, and uh, my now one of my best friends, Peter Smith, uh, is sitting behind the desk, flight instructor. I still don't believe Peter Smith's name is Peter Smith. I think he's like one of the one of the men in black uh, folks works for the government. <laughs> Congratulations, Reg. It's a squid. Okay. Anyways, Peter and Sonia are sitting back there and I walked in on my American Express card and I said, I'm ready to fly the airplane. I want to fly the fastest thing you got and uh, I want to show you how to do it. Can I do it today? And they're like laughing at me. I was like, no, no, no. Like, I want to like, how do you get the, to be the pilot? So like, they kind of talked to me a little bit, signed me up. We went on a flight the next day and um, <laughs> four months later, I had a pilot's license, uh, passed my check ride. Just don't, if I hit it, if I run into it, make sure it's a good shot. All right. That's Steve Jackson's first solo and he's off.
right, besides sliding off the complete side of the runway, our first solo deal was a success with my man, Peter Smith. All right, give it to me, right, Here he goes. Give it to me. Hey, and, and in real tradition, I'm going to try to get as much canvas as I can. Ah, right, so. you take the whole thing. Now, you know you have to drive home with this shirt. I'm going to go into the club. You crazy. Yeah. I'm going to Wild Wings to get some chicken wings like this. <laughs> I, I, one thing I am not is baffled. I'll be like, what's up? This is the new style. I'll have all the, I'll have all the teenagers wearing clothes like this in a week. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> They'll be like... I saw this old redneck, you know, got some new technique. Flying, being a private pilot without an instrument rating is not really suitable for the types of flying that I do. Going places and having to get there. So I immediately started on my instrument training, got my instrument rating uh, done a few months later. And now I'm studying for my commercial, hopefully get my commercial check ride done in a few months. Uh, from there, I want to do multi my multi-engine and then maybe uh, work on my CFI. I would love to, in my later years, uh, be a flight instructor or maybe work on my ATP uh, license uh, as kind of a retirement plan. So that's my aviation deal. I love flying. Um, <laughs> when I started flying, I was renting uh, club planes here, and I didn't like having to be on a schedule. I wanted to be able to fly when I wanted to. Didn't have the funds to buy what I wanted, so I bought Bonnie. This is Bonnie. Um, but I've had a lot of questions about what type of airplane do I fly. Uh, Bonnie here is a 1990 model uh, Beechcraft Bonanza F33A. Um, when I bought Bonnie, she needed uh, interior, radios and avionics, paint, as you can see, she still needs, and an engine. So basically, uh, definitely a fixer-upper. But by buying a plane like that, I got to make her my own. Not only did I get it really inexpensive, but I got to pick a lot of the components and upgrades that, um, that we got to put in the plane. Uh, so I take off, I get it, I'm excited, we're going flying. Uh, within two weeks, I'm like, all right, I need to start working on this thing. So I do avionics and interior, uh, replaced, it had a, a, a Garmin 530 in it with a G500. The G500 was already there. Everything else was old legacy stuff, King radios. Um, upgraded it to a GTN 750, uh, Garmin EIS TXI, kept the G500, put a standby G5, uh, new autopilot GFC 500, and a new Garmin 225 slimline uh, backup radio, uh, along with new interior, new antennas, new everything. That was a big project. Uh, immediately after that, flew around for a little while and uh, blew the engine up. <laughs> I was on the way back from Vegas, running a, doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing, and smoked a piston in a motor, and flew it into Washington, had an engine put in it. Um, so now, uh, we've got brand new engine. It's a, a Continental IL 550. Uh, we got new avionics, we got new radios, and she is getting closer to being done. Uh, she's scheduled to go in for paint on November 2022, uh, November 1st. Uh, Evoke Aviation in Alabama is going to paint it and uh, I may post some some schemes as we get a little closer and let you guys kind of uh, see what you like or what you don't like about paint scheme. I've been working on the paint scheme since like before I bought the plane. Um, as you can see from some of the photos uh, of putting the engine in, she was stripped bare. Um, the, the, the Bonanza F33A I think is one of the best platforms for flying in general aviation. The Bonanza fleet is, is very versatile, they're stable, and they're pretty fast. Uh, I tell everybody about this plane. It, it's not the fastest, but it's pretty fast. It doesn't have the most useful load, but it carries a lot. Um, it's not the most stable, but it's pretty stable. It's got a big baggage door in the back. I have flown blocks, cylinder heads, superchargers, pistons, you name it, engine-wise, drive shafts. If it'll fit in this plane, I have flown it. I have had tubing and carbon fiber sticking up in the cockpit with me and uh, probably do some stuff that I'm not supposed to do. Uh, but I very much enjoy flying myself to the races. I'm very fortunate. It's a skill. If you have a passion for aviation, go out to your local flight school and take a test flight. See if it's for you. You will know right away. The first thing you will do is you'll feel like a fish out of water uh, when your feet aren't on the ground anymore. And then uh, if you just can't stop thinking about it, like if you go home and you want to go flying again, um, it may be for you. It, 
Anybody can fly these planes if you put your mind to it. It's just like life. If you have attention to detail, if you're meticulous, and you kind of like to have some adventure, uh, flying may be for you. A lot of folks, when they have a bad day, want to go uh, to the bar, want to go clock out and watch Netflix. If I have a bad day, if it's a really bad day, I'm getting in my airplane and I'm gonna go flying. I turn my phone off, uh, climb up and go see if I can chase the sunset. I'll go fly to our airport to have dinner uh, or whatever. So it, the freedom of it uh, kind of makes you feel like a pirate uh, in the old days, um, smoking around the ocean. But that is how I got started in aviation. This is my plane, Bonnie. Uh, me and Bonnie, we've had a, we've spent about 550 hours together. Uh, I bought Bonnie November 2020 in, 13 months, 14 months, I've flown to 550 hours. So that's that's a pretty decent amount for a general aviation plane. Uh, this is my hangar. Um, I feel like that uh, any man who has a plane has to have a place to hang out with his buddies. So um, give you guys a little rundown. I got a little Sweet 16. Everybody at the air airport here makes fun of me because I got all kind of drag racing memorabilia. And they're like, yeah, you want to race planes? And I tell them if I could find something a little faster, I would definitely do it. Uh, you got to have a refrigerator and you got to have a full bar in case a hard time set in. Um, boom, boom, boom. One of the hardest trophies I ever won. A little motivational speech. Don't ever give up. Uh, I actually, this is a true story about this. This is a metal sign. I, when I was uh, a child, when I was in elementary school, one of my teachers had this on the wall. And I saw this sign and it stuck with me my whole life. Like, that is, if that isn't the epitome of drag racing and living life in motorsports, I don't know what is. When you're being eaten by the bird that's bigger than you, try to kill him. At least try to kill him on the way down. <laughs> you got to be able to um, watch a little football. Every once in a while, Peter or one of my buddies get out of line in darts, and I'll have to give him a little test of Ruski. Uh, and then also, uh, just remember, I can fix anything except stupid. A little walk around of the hot rod airplane. She's not a Butte <laughs> Clark yet, but she will be. 